This past year has been a time of rapid change, adaptation, and transformation for the Renaissance Society. It offered us an opportunity to reinvent this 35-year-old organization. Today, we will discover what the future holds for our society's continuous improvement. Sacramento State President Robert Nelson is here with the Renaissance Society President Ken Cross to give us an update on Sac State's plans and answer any questions you have. And now, here's President Nelson. You're on. Hi, everyone. Um, I hear you're coming back. I'm excited that you're coming back. I can't wait to have all of you here participating, being part of our community, being part of Sac State. We're coming back as well. During this last year, 60% of our students had a one class. Uh, this coming semester in the spring, 71% of our students will have all of their classes on our campus. And 80% of our classes are gonna be here live face to face. There'll be 20% that will still be online. And that's because some of the students have dispersed. Some of the students are working in LA or someplace else and they can't get back. And to come back if you're a senior for one class doesn't make a lot of sense, but we are back to being face to face as we've always been. The good news is that 95% of the students are vaccinated or have attested to a religious or a medical exemption. Uh, those that are exempt in some way or another are testing twice a week. So we know that it's safe. We've not had spikes of Omicron or Delta or anything on campus, but the vaccination clinic has been up and running and we have boosters for our students uh, as they need them. We also have boosters for our faculty and our faculty are at 96%. Uh, so it's a safe campus. It's a campus where we feel good about it. Uh, most of the uh, food venues are open, uh, so you can go. We're still having Zocalos is going to come in and Pyology is going to come in and Habit Burger is going to come in and replace uh, some of the older uh, venues. That's taking time with renovations. I think all of us know that uh, getting renovations done right now is not particularly easy, but we're getting them moving forward. Uh, Kadima Hall, uh, the art sculptures and labs and everything else are in the middle of major renovations there. And one of the things you're going to notice when you get back here is that the classrooms have been radically, radically updated. We took 486 classrooms, put in new um, document readers, and you'll be able to use them where you just lie down a document and it will read it and put it up on the screen for you. They've got new projectors, they've got new whiteboards, and every uh, room has now microphones in there so that you can be heard. And the technology is so much stronger and better. That's 486 classrooms. We only had about 60 classrooms in the past that were really fully um, technologically up to date, and now they are. And so that's going to be exciting for you as well. Um, we made it through. We made it through. It wasn't easy, but we graduated last year 9,099 students. I wish we could have found the one more, so it would have been 90,100 students. But we got that many students and they had that chance to be able to graduate. We had to do it with car commencement. Uh, car commencement was actually pretty fun. Uh, we drove through campus, uh, people drove through campus and the faculty lined up on the street in their robes and waved to them. And it ended up being a lot better than we thought because a lot of people were able to be with their students the entire time. Uh, they're used to sitting out in the big hall and not being there. Uh, we got a lot of compliments from people saying that was really wonderful to be able to be with my daughter 
the whole time as she's graduating. And we still got their names to be able to come across uh, a big screen and, and pictures and, and sayings and that. But the students really miss Golden One. And so we're going back to Golden One uh, this uh, spring. We expect we'll graduate uh, close to the 9,000 students that we did last year, but we're going to do it in person. In person where people can actually celebrate. The students deserve it. We want it to happen. It's going to be really wonderful. Of all of the CSUs, all of the California State Universities, only three of them grew last year. Sac State was one of those universities that grew. We grew to 31,588 students, about 200 more students than we had before. And that has been really exciting to, to know that we're still on track to graduating, to having new programs, to having the ability to be able to transform this region through our graduate students and through our individual students. You missed one heck of a football season if you didn't come out to see the football season. We won for the second time in a row, the Big Sky Championship. Yes, we won the Big Sky Championship for the second time in the row. That was exciting as exciting could be. Unfortunately, we lost in the playoffs to the Jackrabbits, and nobody wants to lose to a Jackrabbit, but we lost. We'll be back next year. We've got our quarterbacks coming back. We've got a lot of seniors coming back. They're excited to be able to be here, and they'll be sporting another big ring. <laughs> so uh, we think we'll have another winning team then. Tonight is Flip Fest. Flip Fest is the beginning of the gymnastic season. I can't wait to see the young women in the uh, gym in the nest. Uh, we've already started our basketball games. We're about 50 50 at this point, but you should see our women's team. We have a new coach, Coach Campbell. He came from Oregon State. And he helped develop the number one player, the number one pick in the WNBA last year, Ian Eskew. And when he came here, he brought two brand new recruits. And if you're on campus, you would notice them. They're both six foot five. Six foot five. It's exciting to see them play. It's exciting to see the women play. The men, we have a new coach there as well. He's actually been our assistant coach for many years, Brandon Laird. He is bringing that team forward. And I think you'll see a much more exciting, pressing type of basketball. Um, and it's been really good to look at them and see them really progress. So the sports are back. Volleyball was wonderful. I invite you to come to the games. And the really good news is that the capital campaign, the comprehensive campaign, and a lot of it is because of you, the Renaissance Society that's helped us so much. We have announced it publicly and we will be concluding it a year early in March, having reached our goal. The goal was $225 million. Right now, we're at $219 million, 97% of the goal. I talked to a donor today. And that donor, and I want to make a special announcement when it happens, but that donor is going to give us $1.5 million for our power engineering program. And what we're doing there 
with electrical vehicles, with batteries, with transmission lines, and being involved in making this a more sustainable world, a more sustainable carbon neutral world. I do have some, for me personally, sad news, but for the person that I'm gonna talk about, some good news. I know Steve Perez has talked to the Renaissance Society in the past. Steve will be leaving us on June, on January 3rd. He will be the new president of San Jose State. I am thrilled for him. It's a wonderful opportunity. And I think he will build San Jose State and take a lot of the ideas that we have here and make a difference there. We have improved our graduation rates by 186%. We've already exceeded our through and two program. That's for our transfer students who already come with associate's degree. We've already exceeded our goal that was set there. We will reach our goal for the four-year graduation rates of 30% by next year. That's up from 8%. That is saving the students who in the past took six years to graduate, over $58 million. Plus, they're already starting to earn money for themselves because they're out there in the workforce being successful. Now we're focusing on our underrepresented minority students and the opportunity gap there. We're focusing very hard on making sure that those who dropped out because of COVID re-enroll. Those who are working can have summer classes and mini master classes between the semester. We're working very hard to make sure that they have degree plans that they can look at and be advised on and know exactly what courses they need to take so that they can graduate on time. And we're working on those holds, financial holds that students have that are keeping them from graduating. This year, we took those holds and use the higher education emergency relief funds from the federal government to pay them off because it helped the students. The students themselves got grants of $900 a semester, a new grant of $900 per semester will be going out to them next semester in the spring. And we established a, a computer program. We made available over 7,000 computers to our students because they didn't have the technology that they needed. We gave them grants of 600 to $900, worked with the bookstore so that there was a Dell or there was a, a, a Apple MacBook that they could buy there. We loaned out literally thousands of hotspots. I am proud of our faculty. I'm proud of our students. I'm proud of what we were able to do. And we will we'll continue to make sure that they graduate on time doing the very best they can. Last week, we announced a telework policy. We learned during the pandemic that not everybody needs to be on campus all of the time. So some people will be working from home. If it doesn't hurt the university, 
doesn't hurt the operations, then we'll work with faculty and with staff who need to be with their families or who may be compromised in some way and may for health reasons need to be home or for family reasons. The teleworking policy is exciting because it gives people opportunities and changes. But when you come back, and as I said, I'm glad you're coming back. When you come back, the services you're used to will be here. What you need will be here. We will be here to support you and help you see what is possible at our university. I know Ken is going to talk in a little while about Don Girth. Um, I just wanted to bring up Don at the end here. We lost Don Girth. He was a monumental man. He was a big fan of the Renaissance Society and he helped shape this university. There's a lot of sadness right now because of that. But there's also a lot of thankfulness. So many people have made Sac State what Sac State is. A great university, a university that graduates its students on time, a university that is dedicated to anti-racism, to inclusiveness, to justice, to belonging, to caring. A university that is here for the people, for everyone, including, especially including, the Renaissance Society. So I'll be on campus. You'll see me still doing stingers up. I'll still be saying Sac State's number one because in my heart it is. And in your heart, I think it is as well. And we will be celebrating this great university and everyone who is part of the Hornet family. And you are part of the Hornet family. So thank you. And with that, I'll turn it over for questions and please ask away. Thank you very much for the presentation and also everything you do for both the Sac State and Renaissance and the greater community that is served by you and CSUS. Uh, I do have a few questions. Uh, one is you had mentioned earlier the percentage of people who were either, who had responded uh, in terms of vaccination status um, and exemptions. Uh, a more specific question that one of the attendees asked was, what percentage of faculty and students are actually vaccinated as opposed to what percentage um, are using exemptions and testing? The actual numbers are, uh, so it's 96% for faculty, over 95% of them are vaccinated, okay? It's a little, just about 1.3% that have exemptions. With the students, it's closer to 3% of the students that have exemptions, whether religious or otherwise. So closer to 93% and 3%. Thank you. Um, what challenges and what opportunities do you see Sac State um, being presented in the next, let's say one to three years? We need a new, an engineering building, okay? Uh, Santa Clara Hall, I hope no one in the Renaissance Society has a class in Santa Clara Hall because it doesn't have even central uh, HVAC, okay, or heating. 
Um, so we needed uh, a new building there. That's why uh, I took a group of people around today to talk about building that building and building our engineering program to be ready for electrification uh, here. We are continuing to grow our programs in health sciences, and they're growing at a, a very, very rapid rate. We have now got new degrees in health sciences. Uh, and one of the, the challenges is getting enough nurses out there, getting enough social workers out there uh, and working with them to, to grow as we come along. Uh, I'm not satisfied with 30% of the students graduating in four years. I want to see it up into a national range that would be closer to 40, 50%. Um, not everyone can graduate in four years. A lot of people have got to work. There's a lot of things you've got to do, but we need to continue to work on the graduation initiative and make sure that the students continue to graduate. As I mentioned, a lot of the schools have gotten smaller, we've gotten larger, we need to handle the larger school place. Relating in part to that, do you see the future of education continuing in this hybrid form? I see where you're gonna have at least 20% of our classes online. And we're going to have more and more of our classes that will be partially online and partially at home. We have what we call hyperflex classes, where a student will get homework and they'll work in groups online for maybe one or two days. And then they come in and work with the faculty for the other one or two days. They've worked on a problem out there. They come in and find out if they've got the right solution. So there's going to be a combination of both. The COVID was not all bad. We learned how to be more efficient. Advising is better. Some of the telehealth is better. So there'll be a combination of both. But Sac State will always be at least 80% face-to-face. Another question. Um, there is um, certainly much concern about misinformation. Um, and I, hate, I think we all dislike using the term fake news, but misinformation, mischaracterizations, et cetera. Has that effect affected Sac State very much? And if so, how are you addressing it? And also, is there something Renaissance can do to help address it? There is misinformation out there. The web cannot be trusted. We all know that. It's never been completely trustful. Uh, we saw a lot of that with the vaccinations at the beginning where people were worried about what would happen if you got the vaccinations and that. We countered it with information. And the more information that we can get out there, the better that we, it is. The more that we can su uh, sustain and support good news channels, the better it is. I haven't thought about the Renaissance Society helping, but you know, we trust you um, and we trust uh, what you have to say. So whether it's your individual classes that you, you have taking place or whether it's just meeting with us and having honest and open conversations, I think that's all helpful. Related you want to, to be that. a caring ca campus. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Also, uh, related to that is, does your... Do your libraries offer uh, or librarian offer any classes in how to weed through this information, how to avoid the pitfalls? Not to my knowledge. I think that's a good idea. That's what I'm taking in and making <laughs> as a, a mark. That's why we want the Renaissance Society here. I think that's a good idea. And uh, the last question before I, we turn it over to, uh, to Ken, are masks required for um, uh, on campus, you know, in the classrooms? Yes, masks are required in the classrooms, inside any building. On campus it, uh, itself, as you're walking around, you do not have to wear masks. I would say probably 80% of the people are wearing masks because it's just more convenient going in and out. But as long as the um, 
the county recommends masks indoors, we are requiring masks indoors. Thank you very much. I know we'd like to continue to have questions you for you for and have a dialogue with you for another half hour. But at this point, we're going to turn it over to Ken Cross, who hopefully, as everyone knows, is president of the Renaissance Society and also very key for all of us. So I want to thank uh, President Nelson for being with us today, and uh, uh, he's been a great supporter for the Renaissance Society and has really kept us informed as we've uh, uh, had to move off campus along with the, and, and do the pivot, the pandemic pivot, and, and it's also helped us get back on campus. We really appreciate that. So I want to welcome everyone today to our uh, uh, last forum series for the, uh, for the fall semester. This is a lot, really the last day of classes today. And uh, on the slide, you'll see our, uh, our new logo for the Renaissance Society of Sac Sacramento State and uh, that we worked up uh, this last year, our communications and marketing team. So um, with that, I'd, uh, you know, the cat is out of the bag here now. We sent a message out yesterday that we will be back on the Sac State campus this spring semester. And I think uh, everybody's excited on that. Not forcing anybody to come on, any program leader or any a member. You, we'll talk more about that here at the end. But we're going to continue to have both a uh, uh, a hybrid program where we can have programs both on Zoom as well as on campus on Fridays. So as President Nelson mentioned, we were sorry to hear this week the passing of uh, Donald R. Girth. Dr. Girth was the president emeritus of uh, Sac State. Um, he passed on Monday at age 93. Uh, he was the longest serving president from 1984 to 2003, 45 years in education. Uh, he had some real notable accomplishments. You'll see there on the slide. Uh, he helped uh, oversee more than $100 million in public and private funding that added 1.2 million square feet on the campus. I uh, was an advocate of the California Master Plan for Higher Education. Gave a personal gift of over $300,000 to modernize the uh, and, and uh, make the university archive more accessible and he was named Sacramento of the Year in uh, 2000 by the Sacramento Chamber of Commerce. So here you see a picture of uh, Don and Bev uh, Girth at our last uh, annual general meeting uh, in person in the spring of 2019. Uh, Bev was the 2019 recipient of the President's uh, Medal for Distinguished Service. And as we said, Don was the 10th CSU president, the longest serving president. It's interesting, I got asked this day um, by the person hosting the event for our scholarships if I would sit at the table. So we had a great time chatting uh, and uh, Don started at Chicago, uh, University of Chicago at age 16. He was telling me the whole story on that where he earned three degrees and it was quite a great time. And Don and Bev have always been strong sponsors of our uh, scholarship program. So. Um, also, you'll see on the slide, Diane Hyson, Dr. Diane Hyson, the Dean of the uh, SSIS as our liaison has kept us informed along with President Nelson over our last, um, uh, the last year and a half, two years of the pandemic. So I wanted to show you the, uh, we have some pictures here of our numbers, November 6th, uh, ASI Food Pantry uh, Thanksgiving food drive. You can see people who had a drive through on a Saturday morning on the 6th of November. And uh, we had a great uh, turnout, uh, people dropping off gifts, dropping off checks, and uh, had a table and, uh, and a pop-up out there. And the results were, we raised in monetary donations over $4,800, we had, which was equated to 120 food baskets, plus 19 physical food, food baskets for a total of 139 baskets and from 30 donations from 30 members. Uh, in addition, uh, we in 2019, 2020, uh, last year, uh, we had the full year, we raised over $25,000 from voluntary donations from our members. And this year we got, earned the coveted Golden Plate Award uh, for 2021 for the uh, food drive. So also this year, we had our scholarship recipients uh, last spring. Uh, we, we presented seven scholarships of 3,000 each for a total of $21,000 to the young people you see on the left there. And uh, that brought us up to 107 scholarships we've given since 1993, a total of $227,000. So you should be receiving in the next few days a letter from 
uh, solicitation letter for our fall solicitation letter for our scholarship program. Uh, please consider that as an end of year gift for, to raise money for our donations uh, to students. Now, once again, seven, uh, we're planning seven scholarships of $3,000 each next spring at our annual general meeting in May. We also went back on campus with the Sac State Physical Therapy Department. Uh, actually, one of our members is a former chair of that department, uh, Sue McGinty. And uh, we went over this year, we had 31 volunteers who paired up with 31 students. And they went and actually did a series of different tests uh, where they, uh, students weighed, measured, and took their blood pressure. And then they uh, put them through their paces, walking up and down stairs, sitting in chairs and standing and as many times as they could in 30 seconds and walk as fast as they could for six minutes. So this has been a great program. All the reports from people who have participated, our members have participated in this program, have talked about what a positive experience it was and how it improved their health. We're continuously oversubscribed for this program. So when it, it comes on in constant contact, you better sign up fast or you're gonna miss the, miss the train. We also, uh, last year we had our uh, 19th Amendment Centennial Celebration that actually went out prior to the 2020 presidential election. And we had 170 silent sentinels who occupied the corners of 10th and L streets at the state capitol as well as other busy street corners. And they were celebrating the, the passage of the right to vote for women uh, part of the 19th amendment. And you see some were in full costume there with their dresses of the times. You know, our ambassadors are the folks that go out uh, from our membership diversity and community engagement committee to go out and speak, uh, do the tabling events and speak in the community with COVID going on. It was uh, difficult for them to do that, but we have gone back out and you can see here two of our volunteers that went on uh, 27th October to the Bruceville Point Health Fair in Elk Grove and actually did the tabling event and had a great time uh, and met a lot of people who could be potential uh, future Renaissance members. So if you know of a, uh, an event where we could speak as an organization uh, about the Renaissance Society, or we could do a tabling event, please let us know, just let the office know or let me know, and we'll do our very best. I actually did several of these uh, Zoom presentations to groups and clubs uh, over during the pandemic period. So one of the other things we got real innovative on during uh, the pandemic was doing all kinds of new classes. And here we took the traditional uh, uh, first Friday pizza event we used to have over at, uh, on campus and we did it on Zoom. And uh, you see 35 members here held a, a first Friday Zoom pizza party uh, where they, some ordered in or made their own pizza and they would compare, hold up and compare their, uh, their pizzas and uh, their own personal choices and preferences. and some of the places that they've seen around the country, around the world that made great pizza. And actually uh, Mary Ellen Burns, one of our members actually did a slideshow showing famous pizza places in Sacramento. We were sorry to see Dr. Cheryl Osborne, who's been a long time uh, supporter of the Renaissance Society, who retires the gerontology chair. Uh, she actually started the program recruiting Renaissance members back in 1987 and then full-time in 2000. And we have our mentoring program this semester. I think we have over 83, 84 mentors. We doubled the number this fall because of an increase in that class. So for you actually, if you haven't done this, this is my 12th semester doing it. It's the most fun I ever had. You sit down with a young person, a young student in the gerontology department, and he asks you questions about your life and your timeline. So uh, once again, we wish uh, Dr. Osborne uh, a good time in retirement. And this is a, a flower vase we, uh, with Ed Shin that we gave her as a memento of our uh, work together. And I got a fast slide there. So one of the other things that a lot of people aren't aware of, you know, because we were all at home is that we actually moved our Renaissance office. Actually, we moved it three times across the hall in the Adams building. And then we moved it in the storage. And then finally we mo moved our new location at 350 University Avenue. And I just want to acknowledge the fellow you see here, Second from the left, Scott Reynolds, who's a commercial real estate a professional, been in the business for over four decades, and he helped us uh, to be able to find our location, at, which is in the Porter Scott Law Offices over in Campus Commons. So uh, we really appreciate uh, Scott's help. Showing a little bit about our membership, how we've gone from 2019 to 2020 to uh, 2021. Uh, we set a record in 2019. We had over 2,300 members uh, annually. 
Uh, fortunately, we were able to retain about 80% of our membership. So in 2020, we were over 1,800. And right now, this fall, we were pretty close, and I'll show you in a second here, to what we did in the fall of uh, the previous year. So <clears throat> also in finances, you know, when it came to doing our budget in June of 2020, we really didn't know what was going to happen. We projected a deficit of about $25,000, $26,000. When all was said and done, we actually came up with a a, uh, uh, a surplus, uh, which worked out well, even though our membership was off by about 20%. And I think that's a, a, a really a tribute to our finance and administration committee and their good stewardship uh, that uh, we did not have to raise our dues and actually came out with the surplus. So this is what our membership looks like this year. We actually have gone from uh, uh, this year, we're within about maybe five or 6% of where we were last fall. Uh, so our mid-year membership will open up on uh, portal will open up on uh, January the 4th on a Tuesday, uh, right after the first of the year. And it's still a really great deal. $60 mid-year to have uh, the availability for 108 programs. I mean, you don't get a deal better than that. And I, I think uh, Alan Keon, who used to be in charge of the MDCE committee, used to talk about how it's uh, basically $2 a week. Uh, at this rate, you know, it's a real bargain. So tell your friends, tell your associates about, uh, about our mid-year membership opening up right after the first of the year. And we'll be sending that out in constant contact. One of the other interesting things that have occurred uh, during the pandemic is we were on Zoom and people started to talk about the Renaissance Society and people before that could make the long commute from Maine uh, have joined up. We actually have members today in 21 states and districts uh, across the U.S., all the way from Maine to Hawaii. And uh, so continue to spread the word. Uh, I think just as President Nelson said, we plan to continue to have uh, a, a hybrid program because uh, as you'll see, about 5% of our members are from outside the greater Sacramento area um, at the commuting distance. Uh, so that we know for sure. But we also have a number of people, anecdotally, I can tell you, that have called or emailed me and said they've started, they had stopped coming to campus because of mobility issues, you know, driving to uh, commuting, uh, finding parking, getting across the campus, and now they're doing it on Zoom, and they really hope we'll continue to do that. So um, that's above and beyond that 5%. So here are some of the results I've talked about. We had this fall uh, over 1,500 members, 184 new members. 1,330 renewals, and the renewals, 61 of those uh, were honorary members. Uh, we actually had 108 seminars this fall and over 10,800 enrollments by those members. Uh, and we also had uh, new members from 61 cities in the state of California because we're on Zoom. And all of this has been possible because of over 300 volunteers who helped make this happen. So this is clearly, as Mary and Kyle says, one remember says, we are a volunteer powered organization. So something for you to consider, you may find a way that you'd like to engage. I encourage you to see the new uh, Renaissance Annual uh, Society Annual Report for 2020, 2021. This is the cover you see here. Uh, and I, you can find it on our Renaissance Society uh, webpage under the board and governance uh, page. Uh, what it'll show you is we've retained 80% of our members. Uh, we had over 247 programs and over almost 28,000 enrollments uh, during the, the uh, academic year. Uh, we expanded our virtual programming schedule Monday through Friday, and we uh, shifted our programs to Zoom, and we really uh, uh, transformed the, uh, the overall uh, program. And we created a beautiful new catalog uh, in three different uh, formats, and we broke down barriers uh, from commuting time and distance and campus parking and mobility and accessibility so people could come back to campus on Zoom. So this is the kind of two of the covers we had the last two falls. I have the, the fall 2020 and the fall 2021. Our new catalog for the spring will be coming out, out uh, be posted on our website on January 10th. So uh, be looking for that so you can uh, take a look at those classes. We'll have a week, about a week between the catalog being posted before the seminar our program registration opens up. So thinking in terms of that, our programs for the, the, the spring, we have a total of 108 programs. You can see the mixture there between seminars, shared interest groups, community presentations, the big history series, uh, the Tuesday speaker series and former forum speaker series. So a lot of options to choose from. One of the things we'll be doing is a uh, on-campus programs. 
we'll have a, a number of volunteers, uh, program leaders that have chosen to go back on campus. And so that'll be a combination of straight physical classrooms where they're traditionally we've taught. And we'll also have something called high flex, which is uh, a way of actually simultaneously teaching in person as well as uh, uh, sending uh, streaming it on Zoom at the same time. So we're gonna be doing some beta testing on that, actually starting some training next week to be able to learn how to do that high flex program. So we did a summary uh, this fall, actually in November uh, last month of our all our members, we return rates typically on constant contact, uh, five to 6% uh, is considered good. Our return rate, rates were 35% um, from our cur current members, and we got 16% return from people who had not joined the last year or two because of uh, one reason or another. So uh, the members uh, basically said, the current members said 54% preferred having hybrid classes where they had the option to take classes both on campus and on Zoom. 84% uh, said they would stay with us even if we didn't go back on campus. And then we had a kind of a mixed bag for, you know, what kind of safety precautions we wanted to take. So I'll, I'll talk to those in just a few minutes here. And uh, last from the non renewals about 77% said they did not renew because of uh, there were no campus activities. And 59% said they would renew in spring if we had campus uh, on campus classes. So once again, as I mentioned, 95% of our current membership is in the greater Sacramento region. So here's what we've been, we've been working very closely with the uh, uh, with Sac State's Risk Services Management Department uh, to come up with our plan, safety plan. We're required to do that. It's a third party event or activity. So there are five things we've said we will do and tentatively our, uh, our safety plan has been approved. So as President Nelson mentioned, we're required, to, uh, people are required, our members will be required to be fully vaccinated to participate in indoor programs on the campus. Uh, we will not have uh, any uh, kind of uh, medical or religious exemptions. And so our members will still have the option to be able to participate um, via uh, distance learning. As far as uh, we will require vaccination self-attestation, uh, so the members will be required to read, complete, and sign a vaccine self-attestation sheet uh, when they enter the classrooms in each session. Now, also, the program leaders will be uh, showing or requiring you to show your COVID-19 vaccination, vaccination rec uh, rec record card. And then on face masks, both program leaders and students will be required to wear a face mask. Uh, and they're, you're expected to bring your own face mask. We'll have a small supply of masks available in case you've forgotten or lost yours on the way to, to campus. Social distancing. Um, both program leaders and students are encouraged to social distance wherever possible in their Sac State classrooms. This is not required by the university, but is desired by, based on our surveying by most of our members. We're asking us members to honor that uh, so people feel safe. Uh, what is a social distancing? We, we For us, it's a minimum distance of three feet, a preferred distance of six feet. So we'll try to do that as best we can, not required by the campus, but we're going to try to do our very best to make people feel comfortable. Lastly, the program leaders are going to be the responsibility to make sure we comply with both Stack State and the Renaissance safety plans and uh, compliance checks. We'll be monitoring the completion of the, the self attestation sheet. They'll check this COVID-19 vaccination record, record cards ensure program participants are wearing their face masks and social distance in classrooms. And the program leaders will also be ensuring that we have a backup supply. Renaissance will be providing that of face masks and hand sanitizer in the class. So this is what the, uh, the attestation sheet says. I don't expect people to read all that. You can read it when you get to class, but basically it's boilerplate that uh, we're required to use. Uh, lawyers have drawn this up so everybody understands the risk involved with uh, the COVID. The one thing we've added down there is I have no symptoms of COVID-19 currently. And then people will be asked, members will be asked to put their name, sign it, and uh, uh, as they come into class each week. So in doing this, one of the people who has advised us is one of our members and uh, Dr. Glenna Trochet, who's a Renaissance member, but also a, um, has been a preventive health uh, specialist, a physician for over four decades. She's a former Sacramento County health officer for 12 years, and she's currently the uh, deputy uh, uh, county health officer in Nevada County currently. 
Uh, she's actually advised the board on three occasions. Uh, she came to us the first time on the 9th of March of uh, 2020, uh, when we just announced about what was happening with the pandemic, pandemic and she really caught our attention, got everybody really caught our attention. And then she talked to us last fall. And again, this Monday, uh, we had a board meeting and actually she briefed us once again and we voted to return to campus. So there were two recommendations that Dr. Trochet made. One was that require attendees to attest to um, uh, no symptoms. We added to our sign-in sheet. And then the other statement she made is prudent, and we had this in our message yesterday in our constant contact message. It is prudent for all those who have received their J&J vaccine at least two months ago or six months since getting the, uh, the second dose of an mRNA vaccine to get a booster dose at any time. <clears throat> Uh, oh, adults of any of the three authorized vaccines. So encouraging people to get boosters if you haven't done that before you return to campus. So here are some key dates for the spring 2020 uh, semester. Uh, as I had mentioned before, January 4th on a Tuesday, the membership registration portal will open up. You've already signed up for annual membership, not a problem. You're good, you're covered. But we encourage you to spread the word to your friends and associates out there. We found every time I've polled on this in the past, the 90 some percent of people, the way they hear about Renaissance is because our friend or associate told them, or one or more of his friends or associates told them. The catalog will be posted on our website on Monday on the 10th of January. The program registration portal will open up on Monday on the 17th of January, so one week later. And then we're gonna be having our seminar leaders workshop on the 20th for program leaders. And our orientation rendezvous uh, will be online on Zoom from 10 to 11.30 on Friday on the 21st of January. Programs will begin on the 7th of February and on a Monday, and last programs will end on May 6th. So opportunities engage. I encourage you, we're gonna be starting uh, after the, our nominee committee, after the first year, we'll be starting looking for members at large to serve on our board of directors. I can tell you, I did that myself two years, um, and it really was a great learning experience. Um, and I encourage you to check into that. We'll be sending more information about that. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we uh, solicitation letters should be coming to you in the next few days for our uh, student uh, Sac State Student Scholarship Fund, uh, which will award those scholarships in May. So we're gonna uh, you'll get that letter. Think consider about donating uh, to the Renaissance Scholarship Fund. Uh, once again, I encourage you to invite your friends and family and acquaintances to join Renaissance uh, for the uh, mid-year membership. And then last, we have a number of opportunities where you can volunteer and get involved with committees. So if you're going on our board and governance page of our website, you will be able to find ways that you can get involved. So with that, I'm gonna open it up to question and answers. I'm gonna stop my uh, sharing here. And uh, it looks like we've got some questions that Ruth Ann's gonna send to me. <laughs> and here we go. <laughs> well, so following up in terms of classes, um, Will all classes be available on Zoom? And also, how is it decided which classes um, are on class, uh, on campus, on Zoom, or hybrid? So not all classes will be on Zoom. Uh, let me say that the, how it's decided is the program leader makes that choice as far as where they want, uh, what day of the week they like to teach, and if they like to be on campus or they like to be on Zoom. So. We'll have classes on, on uh, Zoom, Monday through Thursday. And on Friday, the classes will be uh, either on campus or high flex, which means the high flex classes will be ones in which a program leader has chosen to teach in person, person while simultaneously uh, streaming on Zoom. Did that make sense? Yes, yes. Okay, all right. <laughs> Related to that, and this, this is true for us, some of us who remember when everything was on campus and you sometimes had to rush uh, to register. Do you know if any of the classes which are on campus only will have limited numbers of registrations? In other words, people should quickly look at that booklet and sign up fast as need be. So once again, I'm going to give you a little more detailed answer to fully answer that question. One thing is the program leaders determine how many people they want in their class. So some classes lend themselves to being smaller, more intimate for discussion purposes. 
Some seminar leaders really don't care, you know, they, as many as can be there. So they put in the, when they put in their request for their program, they say what their limit's going to be if there is any. Um, we have requested our classes, uh, our, our classrooms from uh, Sac State uh, Division of Space Management. Uh, we've been told that we should hear on those classes by the middle of December, the end of December. Um, so uh, we will be posting those um, in the catalog in you know, in the registration system when we know where the classrooms are going to be. Did I fully answer that question? Yes. And okay. related to that is um, just to confirm that the catalog will hopefully indicate which are, which classes are on campus, which classes are only Zoom and which classes are the hybrid. Is that also going to be in the catalog? We're endeavoring to do that. The, the simple <laughs> part, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my message yesterday, we had a lot of leapfrogging going on. I, the, I saw a, a, a bevy of emails that, that they're driving the program committee a little crazy right now. But, you know, you can pretty much trust Monday through th Thursday, those classes are all going to be on Zoom because we only have access to the campus on Friday. That's part of our memorandum of understanding. The classes on Friday will be a mixture of physical and person and some high flex. And we're going to endeavor to have that both in the catalog as that well as people who have requested a printed catalog, we don't send them a 70, 80, 90 page catalog. We send them a, a simple uh, abbreviated 12 page or so uh, program at a glance catalog. And we will try to have all that posted in there. The real issue is gonna be what's happening on Friday and having clarity. So we're endeavoring so to about, do that. How about this class, Friday form? On campus, uh, the, the forum committee has decided that they're going to do the forum on um, uh, on Zoom for the spring semester. Okay. okay, there has been some discussion at some point in the future that we might uh, have it both on Zoom and have a room where it's streaming. Um, but we, we need a beta, beta test this high flex system first this spring before we take it, you know full bore. So the forum will be on, on Zoom for the spring semester. And thinking ahead about the on-campus, um, for those of us who've had the on-campus experience, will parking passes be available for purchase? They will be. And there's another change that happened uh, this fall. Uh, actually, this summer is UTAPS, which is University Transportation and Parking Services on campus. Um, went to a virtual parking system, okay? So now you no longer, used to be we had a part-time person that sent out about 15 or 1600 uh, parking permits by mail each week. We'd have to front $50,000, they'd have to mail them out, and then we'd get reimbursed for the ones we didn't sell. They've gone on campus to a total virtual system. So we'll be sending information after the catalog is posted electronically so people can see how to do that. Basically, you'll be filling out online your license plate for your vehicle, um, and you no longer will have a little tag in your windshield. So there's a actually online in the uh, UTAPS uh, website. Um, it has an explanation of FAQ on all this, but we'll be sending a slideshow out and some other information so people know exactly how to sign up. It's actually going to make it a lot easier for everybody. I mean, for all parties concerned. Yeah. And I have one last question for you. Um, you know, I know that when I look at the catalog, I'm overwhelmed by the, the breadth uh, of classes and how many different areas they touch on. But are there any particular areas where Renaissance does not yet offer classes that you would like to have offered? There's probably a, a, an endless number that I could probably come up with of ideas. What we have found, what works the best is the other way around. Find people who want to be program leaders that have a passion for a subject. It's either something they know a lot about from their, their life experience or something they've always wanted to know about. And so their study and their research is where they come up with the program. I know I do two seminars. One, I've been doing the stuff for 20 years. It was easy for me to teach. The other one I had to do a lot of research on, but we're always looking for program leaders. This is the ideal time right now to be considering to be a spring a program leader for next fall. And so we're always looking for program leaders. All you have to do is let our office know, uh, Laureen Sarney, who is our uh, clerk in charge of our, our catalog. We're looking always looking for uh, new program leaders. 
And that has been, I can't, I think that, you know, rather than having somebody where you teach a subject, finding something they're excited about and they want to know more, that shows in the classroom, right? And people get engaged. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. I'm going to turn it back over to uh, Chris. And again, I and everyone else, thank you for everything you do for Renaissance. It's impressive. I want to thank everybody. I, I want to thank all our members for your participation, hanging in there with us the last year and a half, two years. Um, the only reason our doors are still open today is because we had over 300 volunteers, just like the people you see here today that stepped up as committee chairs, board members, working groups, uh, you know, technical hosts. We had over 90 people stepped up to be technical hosts. That's what helped us keep up the door, open the doors and do the pandemic pivot right along with the rest of the Sac State University. So thank you, thank you for your service. Thank you, Ken, that was great. It was good to learn a little more about uh, what's going on in Renaissance and what's gonna happen in the future. And thank you also to President Nelson for a very interesting presentation on what's happening on Sac State with the students there. It's good to see some positive stuff going on there and a growth of the Sac State uh, University. So as we always do, uh, we'll, the presentation is being recorded and uh, you'll be able to view it in a few days by going to our YouTube channel uh, or click on the link from the Renaissance website. So this was the last forum for 2021. We look forward to sharing more exciting and educational programs with you. Our first forum is gonna be on February 4th, 2022, and we'll see you then. <laughs>